contributes $100. Stephanie says, got a new job, so this is the first time I can give more than a few dollars. Got to see that symphony night blindfold that run. Make sure all the buttons work this time, guys. Yeah, y'all remember that a couple years ago? Anyway, I just want to say that a single $100 donation is less than 101 people making $1 donations. So come on, everybody. Let's get a donation train going and get that incentive met. All righty. So... Long awaited, here it is, it is time, through all the difficulties and all your generosity, it's time for The Legend of Zaheer and his 80% performance of The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Let's go, Zaheer. Ooh. Uh, you're live. All right, <laughs> let's get right into the round. I'm going to start the countdown, and I'll go and go. Like three, two, one, then go. All right. Three, two, one, go. Woo! All right. Welcome to The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds Any Percent Speedrun. You are, I assure you, you are all in for quite the treat. Now, I would like for the uh, couch commentary to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Miriam I'm Gymnast86. And I'm Super MC Gamer. <laughs> and that's Gully. <laughs> <laughs> and he yell. <laughs> so, we do have to go a little bit through of Gully waking us up to get the run started and all, and all that stuff. But once I get outside, he's going to talk to me about one of the weather vanes explaining that I have to save the game and all that stuff. It might seem faster at first to just walk by, go to the next screen and not deal with the weather rain whatsoever, but the game will not let me advance in any way unless I activate the weather rain and save the game. This is the only forced save in the entire game. Everything else I can skip, but I'll probably do for the sake of safety because there are some soft blocks throughout the run that I can run into, so. But as far as the speed run itself, that is the only force saved in the other game. I will be prompted a few times uh, during some cutscenes, but I can just ignore those. Most of the time when he's gonna talk to a weather vane, it's just gonna be to unlock the warp point, and you'll see that later. That is true, that is true. Are, are there any uh, safety saves in, the, in this route, or are we, we going all in? <laughs> <laughs> If everything goes well, and I could be onto some kind of potential, then I'll go right. I'll go for it. <laughs> I'll go all in. But if something takes a little while to get, then then I'll make the safety saves. So this, these are just the blacksmiths just asking us to take the sword to the guard that just left it here. Uh, do you want to let uh, everybody know, like, your history with the game? When did you get into this one? Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, but in a moment, because okay, okay. there's going to be... <laughs> <a very> <laughs> we got some good stuff coming. So we're taking a very quick detour now. Instead of going straight to where the blacksmith wants us to go to, I'm going to go ahead and activate this weather vane right here right now. So once that I unlock the fast travel for the game, we get to have quick access to Kakariko Village anytime we need to. But the detour still goes on. I'm going to go make my way towards Death Mountain. We're going to Death Mountain right now. And I'm going to go ahead and use this bird here, lure him to a certain location, and then I'm going to damage boost off of him. Oh, that's right. Just If that happens, I can just lure him back into the same spot. All right, that second crow wasn't supposed to. Uh, <laughs> he has a friend me. we didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a very simple fix. Just come back. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Those rocks blocking that cave are the, actually the only rocks in the entire game 
that you have to get past. So by doing this, we skip the power glove. And so, yes, this is known the power glove skip. So there is a lot of luck involved in this cave because I didn't get very lucky with any hard drops, but that's... Oh, that was... There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's exactly what I needed. RNG Jesus has answered your blessing. <laughs> I got a spare heart that could really come in handy, and I have 10 rupees coming out of that cave. Uh, the ru those 10 rupees are going to be very useful very soon, and my goal here is to reach the other weather vein before perishing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, so, we're supposed to have that moment where... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, no, yeah, he died. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I need 10 rupees is because we have Ravio shop early right now. Like, normally we're not supposed to have this shop until way after Eastern Palace or something. But the little cutscene, since we went to Death Mountain early, the little cutscene we saw with the spectacle rock erupting, that causes Ravio shop to appear. And now the reason why I wanted 10 rupees by the time the death warp happens is so that I can rent the bow early because it's only 10 rupees until after beating Eastern Palace. So that really works out. But I'm going to rent the fire rod first because as much as Ravio loves money, he is generous enough to allow us to rent the first item we attempt to rent for free if we don't have enough. And then I'll use the... 10 rupees that I just got to get the bow. So it really works out because the fire rod costs around uh, 100 rupees to rent. And it is an item that we will be needing. We won't be getting all the items, but uh, fire, we will be getting most of them. So I'm just going to go back to what the blacksmith wanted me to do and talk to the guard and then make my way to the sanctuary so that I can continue the events with the game. And this is like a return to the story at, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a special guest from uh, Ocarina of Time. We got good old Dampe here. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, you don't have to race him in a dungeon. <laughs> or get a heart piece from Yeah. <laughs> He's just going to panic a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so... Earlier, when we were in the Muldorm cave, we had to rely nothing on just throwing pots at the Muldorm and just trying to avoid the sporadic Muldorm movement in such a tight space. It was really fortunate that I didn't die inside the cave and that I ended up with 10 rupees leaving the cave. But, uh... So we got this, we just got the sword from Dampe. And I'm going to push this grave because there are a grand total of 50 guaranteed rupees that I could get from Sanctuary here. And I'm going to need that to rent the Tornado Rod once I'm out of the Sanctuary. Once you get the lamp, the ability to u actually use these items opens up. Yes, that is true. So all the other rupees that I collect in here is a total of two guaranteed red rupees and two guaranteed blue ones. But with the kind of rupee route that we do have, whatever spare rupee drops we can get can be useful for us. It'll save you getting rupees later on that might be a little bit more out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, so the sanctuary here is pretty much sort of just like a pretty basic tutorial dungeon. That's what you're going through right now. Got the trouble. I heard a rupee drop, so I tried to look for where it was, but it's a little too far out of the way right now. So we're about to reach the cutscene where we meet Yuga for the first time. I get to skip this cutscene, but this is supposed to lead up to meeting Ravio for the first time. But we already know Ravio. And so that's going to create some fun. Mm. That bed doesn't look too comfortable. The big old table. 
Yeah, there he is. There's Ravio. What? No. That's not him. Ah. Oh, there he oh, is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Ravio. <laughs> Now we got two buddies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially what's happened here is the game is overlapping two states of Link's house on top of each other, resulting in two Ravio spawns. And uh, it will be like this for the remainder of the game. <laughs> Honestly, what's better than one Ravio? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's actually another side effect to the, the, uh, the double Ravio here. There's one of the stages, Shahashala, or how, however you pronounce the that name. No. <laughs> yeah, it's the Yes, the Hasrala. <laughs> There's actually two of him for the rest of the game as well. We're never going to see it in the run. It happens at his own house, but we never go there. <laughs> and if we do and run into the double Shahashala, the game softbox. So I actually did not know that. I don't ever want to go to his house then. <laughs> An additional side effect of this is that the stamina meter that you would normally get at this point is not going to appear. It's still there, it, and it affects the, your, your ability to use your items, but you're not going to be able to see it, and so you just have to know. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a visual thing only. It still exists, just we don't, it's kind of a mystery for us. Well, not for Zaheer. He knows exactly where his <laughs> item gauge is at all times. Kind of mandatory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one of the things that makes Link Between Worlds very different is that you can use your items as much as you want, just they're on that, that item gauge. All right, so we're in Eastern Palace now. Now, what I'm going to do, first I'm going to take a damage boost off of this steel rolling ball to get through the, get past a really big one. Because if you get hit by the big one, he gets a really big knockback and falls to the ground, and it takes a while for him to get back up. So those uh, invincibility frames really come in handy. And I'm going to... It seems like I'm going slightly out of my way for here, but I do need those rupees uh, for the rupee route throughout the run. Because right after Eastern Palace here, I'm going to rent the hammer, the bombs, and I'm still going to need 200 extra rupees to by the smooth gem later on. That's gonna let us get the uh, Zora flippers at one point. The hold B room is a very difficult room. <laughs> very impressed by your skin on this moment. <laughs> so right here is gonna be um, something that the power glove skip helps us do, which is normally you can't have the tornado rod in Eastern Palace, but because we do and the tornado rod is glitchy, well, watch. Oops. Oh. There it is. Alright, so, but I'm gonna need this armor, so I'm gonna push him to a very corner that I need him in. And take intentional damage. Nice. <laughs> and so now he can just walk over to the loading zone. Right the into the boss fight. Our, our poor fella, Osfala, he is having a bad day. <laughs> it's kind of what he gets for get, taking a sand route of all items to this place. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll revisit him at a later point. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this fight, very, very simple. I just do two hours at a time. And this part here, I'll shoot two arrows again. But now, for the rest of the fight, I can only just shoot one arrow at a time because I've used up nearly all my stamina and it only recovers just enough where I have to cover the rest of the hits with the sword instead. I'm gonna be picking this up as well because you do not want to die in at any point after the death warp in the very beginning because the way how the rental system works, the item rental system, is that you get to keep it as long as you don't die. If you die, you lose all of your rented items, and that could really throw a wrench in the run. It, it's, a, it's a very tragic moment. And also, you can now merge into walls during the cutscene, which uh, is skipped. You gain the ability to merge into walls, which is, of course, the, the, the trademark feature of this game. 
And now the rest of Eastern Palace is just me picking up rupees that I do need for the rupee route. But other than that, we're pretty much through with Eastern Palace. As a matter of fact, now would be a good time for donations. Well, just happened that I do have a couple of them, including this $200 one from True MG. <laughs> Says, I can't believe our man's out here finally went to GDQ to help this good cause. Your entire stream has your back, bearded buddy. Make us <laughs> proud and don't forget to skip everything. I expect <laughs> many beers in the chat. Good evenings from Germany. Hola, come on. We've got uh, $50 from Tiger Gal says, hey, Za, I won't be able to see your run because of work, but I want you to know I'm so proud of you and hope that you smash that run. Thanks, Kat, and thank you, MG. What's our uh, progress towards that so in blindfold center? Because that's uh, coming up here. I don't know. I can't see it. No. We've got <laughs> about $2,300 away from that blindfolded run. So if you don't get it in before Za here finishes run, we've got a problem. I told you. <laughs> So let's get it in there. $2,132.41. Let's go. So at this point in the run, we're, we're just finishing up some story stuff, and we're going to go on a grand adventure, right, Zaheer? <laughs> Absolutely. A, gr a grand item collecting adventure, more, more than anything. Mm -hmm. So it might seem like I'm going a little out of my way to come to the shop and re-rent the items, but it is important to do this now. Because not only is the hammer on sale for only 20 rupees, but the bombs will be useful very soon for a cutscene skip. That's going to save about 20 seconds instead of just watching it. So it's very much worth just going out of the way to get come to the uh, Ravio shop here. And soon enough, very conveniently, we're going to cross one of the bridges and we're going to meet up with... Oh, we don't have time to look for Gully. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> she she wants us to help us find her son, but what? We'll find him soon enough. <laughs> and here we meet Irene. This is how we unlock the fast travel for this game. Now, to get back to the deal with Gully, he has the item pouch, which enables us to use items on the X button. But it takes a, l it's really far out of the way just to deal with all the cutscenes involved with that. So we're actually just going to be locked down to item on Y for the entire run. And, but soon enough, it's not really going to matter for us. We can, we can handle one item for the whole run just fine. Or one item slot. And at this point you are heading northward to the Zora Kingdom. Right. And I'm going to activate this weather vane here, so we could travel back when we need to soon enough. And that's actually the last weather vane I unlock in Hyrule, in Hyrule specifically. Now just get past those enemies. And they can be tricky, those crabs. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why I have to pick up the heart container at Eastern. But uh, this little cutscene here, this is how we're able to buy the Smooth Gem in Kakariko Village and unlock the Pegasus Boots as well. So once that's done, we go right back to Kakariko. And the first thing we'll do when we get here is to buy the Smooth Gem, which is 200 rupees. Which thanks to the routing, you have more than enough at this point. But we do still have to worry about the rupees for the route. Uh, on, up until we get the Master Sword, we want to have a minimum of 150 by then because we still need to rent the Ice Rod and the Hook Shot. The Hook Shot being 50 rupees and the Ice Rod being 100 rupees. Uh, right now, I'm at 119. If I was at 130, I'd be in really good shape. But since I'm not, there are some backup rupees that I will have to grab. But it shouldn't be too bad. It's right in front of the uh, Zora's Domain. And now we're getting the Pegasus Boots here from the Shady Guy. Now, aside from just allowing us to run really fast with the boots, this is going to be pretty useful for some big skips later on in the run as well. So 
so now I'm gonna head back to where the witch's house is. And that's the only time I warp back to this weather ring. But I have to make my way back into Zora's domain to get the Zora flippers. All the dungeons in this game, except for Swamp Palace, can be done just fine without the uh, without the Zora flippers. But they are still required. Right. So here we're going to see the first use of the bomb rod glitch. You got it? Yep. There's a little cutscene right at the uh, the top of that staircase that if you touch that trigger, it, that's the 20 seconds that uh, you would save it without doing it. And it's a very boring 20 second cutscene too, because <laughs> <laughs> this already is a very long cutscene in itself. Not to mention weird. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you try to watch the cutscene right after this one, then, you know. Then it's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that cutscene trigger is still there, so if you, at this point, if you were to walk over the trigger, uh, it would in fact go again, and it looks really even stranger and silly. In, in this scene, the, the giant Queen Orin eats a fish, and without her being really large, there's just some floating fish being eaten, and it's very fun. And that's why I go kind of out of my way when leaving, because I. I would rather not have to take the time to do that, but it is pretty entertaining if you watch it. <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. <laughs> so those were the backup river rupees that I was talking about. It's because I really want to be sure I'm at 150. 142 is really good right now. There are six guaranteed rupees in House of Gales and plenty of opportunities for random rupee drops. So we, we are heading now to the House of Gales. Right. Now, House of Gales has got has got some few skips, but one really big one that's going to mm -hmm. help us skip a lot of rooms. And they really show what Tornado Rod can do with this game. So first, I'm just going to take this, carry that pot with me, throw it to that switch, so I don't have to go all the way around by falling into the thing or something, or using a bomb to take the to wait for that. But I'm going to time using a tornado rod right there so I can kill those two skulls quickly and then quickly get to the other one before he gets away. Because I do need this key to get to the next room, which has a two frame trick coming up with the tornado rod. And this game does run at 60 frames per second, so the, ti the timing is kind of tight, but we'll see how it goes. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Making it look easy to hear. <laughs> Making it look real easy. Now, that Tornado Rot in itself only saves 10 seconds in total, but those six rupees are very, very important to the route, so it's, it's worth going for. And then I just time using a Tornado Rot. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go monster guts. <laughs> the first time you get the the monster guts, it does the little cutscene, so it's always nice to avoid that, but it was kind of in the way. It's around two to three seconds each time I have to pick up an item for the first time like that. But if I pick up more monster guts, I don't have to worry about that as much, but if I pick up the monster tail or the monster horn, that's, it's going to be the same deal. So hopefully I don't run into those two either. But only time will tell. I got some fun stuff coming up right now. So I'm going to use a tornado rod right there to get this keys to move to where I want him to be, and then use a tornado rod to damage boost off of him right into the next floor. And this skip, that skipped a bunch of rooms in this dungeon. Including the mini boss room. Right. Here's going to do a dash slide. When you cancel a dash, you actually slide forward a bit, and you can cross gaps. That's going to come in handy much later. In this boss, there's a lot of stamina management is the, is the king of it. Okay, so I know we said we were in the House of Gales, but we're actually in the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> you got all these layers and stuff. 
And it's even Halloween themed. Uh, Halloween's right around the corner, so they decided to plop in a giant eyeball on the top too. <laughs> really up in their uh, marketing game since the whole IHOB situation. <laughs> <laughs> So he jumped off there intentionally because, for whatever reason, if you void out your stamina meter, it uh, go, goes back to full. There's a lot of good use of putting down the bombs to get some extra hits in while you're also being able to do sword swings and manage that stamina. Yeah, so for each cycle of this fight, uh, there are progressively more and more layers uh, that the boss places themselves on top of, which is what adds to the challenge. That was intentional, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. People want to clap. Let's clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A GDQ pastime. <laughs> All right, so now would be a great time for donations. All righty, we got $25 from Jamama. It says... Hey, Za, Jamama here. You finally got in. Glad to see one of my favorite streamers and good friends running here. Want to keep the hug train going from Jim's run, so I'll donate again if the whole couch, including the back couch, wiki wiki, hugs. All right. <laughs> this man picked me up yesterday at uh, the booth, back couch, so let's I'll... get to it. Show some oh, loving. Oh, oh gosh. This is the most comfortable situation in GDQ history. <laughs> okay, we can release. We got the money, I think. <laughs> and of course, we got a hundred dollars from JDW63. Says I want to see a blind for the Castlevania run. I don't want Rom Scout to see it though. <laughs> and of course, that puts us at about thirteen thousand one twelve out of the fifteen thousand. You're running out of time, people. Eighteen hundred and change to go. You could probably fit one more. Yeah. All right, I'll squeeze this one in here. We have a uh, $25 anonymous that says, glad to have a GDQ in California. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go California. Everybody's really excited for that. All right, we're going to do some, some fun little magic here. You want to explain this? All right, so <laughs> that... <laughs> So that was case, uh, Cave Skip just now. It saves having to go through the normal entrance, go around on the outside, just to come back to the same cave. For some reason, if we position ourselves properly, we just do a diagonal dash like that. He just runs along the railing. It's, I'm not sure why he's able to do that, but he can and it's useful, and I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tower of Hera is a really fun dungeon because we're gonna, we're gonna, our tornado rod's gonna be used for its Full power here soon. Kind of hoping this fun attack wasn't going to recall off of him, but it happens. This will be the third use of that tornado rod, um, the, sorry, the bomb rod glitch. So it, what happens is, for whatever reason, when you take damage when you're in the middle of the tornado rod going, uh, flying up, uh, it reevaluates your position in the, in the dungeon, so... You can use it to like go between floors and get on top of objects and stuff. And, and here's the, here's gonna show it off. I just gotta be sure they're not too much in the way. All right, everyone in the audience, I have a huge favor to ask of all of you. Oh, that was really close. So once I get this bomb rod, I'm gonna have to count to 13 heartbeats. If you can see his life meter on the bottom left corner of the screen. Is gonna. I'll let you know when I start to count, but I'm gonna need help counting to 13. Well, it's gonna be kind of like a Dora the Explorer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a frame perfect trick too, right? Is it frame perfect or two? Uh, two frames. Two frames, yeah, yeah. Definitely a very tricky trick, though. Th this is one of those I think the first real barrier to entry if, if you're a new runner of the game. But once you get it down, you'll be real comfy with it. Yeah, so uh, uh, thankfully when you're doing it, you can tell if you're early or late, because uh, if, if Link doesn't get hit by the explosion, then you went too high, uh, too early, so that you need to use the Tornado Rod later. And if he gets hit but doesn't uh, achieve the desired effect, then he was too late. There we go. There we go. All right, ready? I want to start the count. One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight we have a prom coming up. nine, <laughs> 10, 11, oh, 12, 12, 13. 13. All right. Yeah. 
Tornado Rock. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Try to trick you with fortune. It was like Dora the Explorer. Thank you, Zaheer. No. Thank Bringing you. It back to my Thank childhood. you, audience. Give yourself a round of applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone want to explain why why exactly I had to count to 13? Your stamina. Yeah. Your stamina yeah. needs to regen because the tornado rod uses a, a big old chunk of stamina, and you need to make sure you have enough because if you don't have enough, Link's going to tumble back through the tower a bit, and that's mm. just going to waste more time. Those two, when he did the tornado rod twice to go up after uh, he waited the 13 heart cycles, um, you have to do those very quickly in succession or you will fall back down. And from here, it's, it, it, it's a pretty by the books ascension of the tower here. Because, of course, the, the, the boss key is not too far out of the way of the boss door. Right it's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the lake. Here's the boss door. It might not look like you can make it across, but you actually can. I mean, you you would have to be you know a little quick about it, but it's fairly lenient to get to the other side. So that's pretty nice. I'm gonna grab that while I have the time. So hamburger. Here we got the Burger <laughs> King. <laughs> <laughs> And he's the Burger King because he lets it have it our way. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that is, if I stand directly in front of him after a full rotation of him spinning, he will chase after us. And then I can usually get easy hits and flash. But he is tricky. He is a tricky boy. So it's actually possible to have to skip this heart container and have it be faster, but only if I kill the Burger King closer to the top right or left corner where those moles are, because I can fall back down, uh, hammer the moles, come back up, and that pendant will actually be instantly spawned right there. But since I was much closer to the heart container itself, it makes more sense for me to just grab that and then had the pendant come down. But at least this way, more health for me. Throughout the runs, because once again, death is not good in this game. You it's not an option. It's, it's, a, it's a run ender in this game. I do have backups in case it happens, but generally, like, if you're doing runs at home or something, you, you don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make my way back to Kakariko Village here, because we do have all three dependents now, and I can get the Master Sword. A very important item in, in the game. And the lore. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good that I have 150 rupees by now, because I do have enough to rent the last two items. And the timing of renting... Actually, I'll get, that, I'll get to that in a bit, but I should explain this first. Now, this mini game right here, where these ghosts move within the circle will always be the same, but the ex exits that they choose will be different every time. So I just memorized the last spot he's going to be before he chooses an exit, and it looks like he chose the left exit, which is... Oops. That's okay. So if I line that up correctly, like in the very middle of those two bushes, I would normally just dash straight through, but it can be a little, little precise. Now, now, this is here. We, we know we got Rom Scouts blindfolded uh, so and run hopefully coming up. I think you can do the third one of these, the hardest <laughs> version of the post. I think you can do that blindfolded. Do you think you can do that? Three ghosts? Yeah, the last blindfolded. one. Blindfolded. Yeah, blindfolded. Now, that's instead of I think you could do for free right now. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll do it. I will do it. You all just right. close your eyes. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just make sure you match wait, it. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah. <laughs> match it. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. This is a master at work here. You can feel where they are in the game. Yeah, there's no so. there's no rumble in the controller, just in case anybody's wondering. It gives them any hints, nothing like that. All right. They've been mixed up. Find them. Yes. Good? You did it. You did yeah. it. Well done. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Rom Scout could ever do that, so... <laughs> In case it wasn't obvious, it's always down for that third round. Hey. <laughs> I spent like five minutes setting up with that one. 
All right, so now we have the Master Sword, and I was about to mention a little earlier that the timing for renting those the last two items that I need works out really well because once you have the Master Sword and you try to enter Ravio's shop, he's going to introduce to one of the best techniques in this game known as Quick Equip. And this is why we don't ever have to worry about the X item slot because this way we can just use Quick Equip and we never even have to pause the game. We Whatever item we'll need, we'll just use Quick Equip and just equip that item instantly. But there's more to it than just changing items without pausing. Now, what you can do with Quick Equip, you can do this thing called Quick Equip Cancel. And what that does basically is that whatever end lag most items do, you can cancel it entirely just by activating Quick Equip uh, during the end lag animation. The best example being the hammer. The hammer is one of the laggiest items to use, but you can just use Quick Equip just as soon as the hammer hits the ground and then pull up Quick Equip and then you have instant control of Link. And that's going to be very useful for some tricks, uh, including the Ice Rod Clip and Fire Rod Boosting. You're going to see plenty of that during uh, the low roll segment of the game. Th those are the tricks that really made this game like shave minutes off real quick. So because of the power glove skip in the beginning of the game, the castle is going to be kind of in a weird state. When you first go to the castle and, like casually, it's all friendly and the guard there's nice guards. And Impa leads you your way and mm -hmm. everything's good. But what's happened here is that we're going to have that state as well as the state where they're hostile to you when you're going up to fight Yuga. This is, this is happy, sad Hyrule Castle. Mm -hmm. Both things are happy and sad at the same time. Okay, what I don't understand is that I had to get checked by that guard, but you got you got two bad green guards over there. <laughs> they <laughs> waltz in, no problem. Note that they're actually floating in the air. I've never they're very that. skilled guards. <laughs> <laughs> because it freezes the... Time, I guess, when it does this cutscene, those guards just uh, are actually <laughs> spawned on above the ground, and we just have to sit here. We just gotta wait for Impa to make preparations for the greatest cutscene of the game. <laughs> so when I played this game for the first time, I thought you would always have to read all five of those portraits over there, but it turns out you can just wait right here, and Impa will come and let you in anyway. It's, it's much faster to do this than to go through all five of those paintings, portraits, or whatever. Now, first we had a Dampe from Ocarina of Time guest appear. Now, we're going to have Zelda specifically from Spirit Tracks visit us here as well. And this cutscene is a little messed up. Normally, it would have a close-in on Zelda and all this stuff, but because of all the enemies here, that kind of... Things are a little messed up. We kind of half go through this cutscene, mostly the text. But it's still faster than the normal cutscene. And there we have it, Spirit Tracks Princess Zelda. Zelda. <laughs> Princess Red Armor, I call her. So I'm just going to make my way to the main part of Hyrule Castle, where we got to climb our way to the top and fight Yuga here as well. Now, this first enemy room, not this room, this room right here, there's something very specific that I gotta do with this chain and ball guy. I gotta do three sword hits, and for the fourth hit specifically, I use a bow. Because for some reason, if you do four sword slashes normally, he will automatically block the fifth hit and then attack, and you can't do anything until you let him attack. But using a bow for some reason just resets that, so I can just use the last four slashes just to finish him off. That was the first use of the Quick Equip cancel. He was using Quick, quick Equip there to avoid the uh, extended animation from using the Ice Rod. So he could use it again much faster. And just like inside Eastern Palace, we're just going to use our friend the Armos to climb the walls. Now for the, for the Ice Rods that I was using on that soldier, I couldn't use quick equip as quickly as possible because even enemies have a bit of invincibility frames to themselves 
So if I try to go too quickly and use one too soon after another, then it won't actually hit him. It it will be that way later on when I try to kill certain enemies with uh, the ice rod. But quick, uh, we will be doing something pretty important with ice rod soon enough. That does involve quick equip canceling the ice rod. How are you gonna deal with these four enemies? You, you, you guys got a strong defense. Oh, nope. Boy. All right. <laughs> Pegasus boots. What a powerful item. So these sets of stairs here, I do a diagonal dash like that to go straight into the door. But there is, there's a possibility that he can bonk like that. And I'm glad I got the first one at least, so you can kind of see the difference. I'm not sure exactly what causes that. I want to say it's the location of where you start the dash, but it's really finicky, but it doesn't cost too much if I do bonk, but in the event that I don't bonk, you know, it's not, it would, it's pretty nice. So now we're approaching Yuga 2. Uh, it's pretty easy like Yuga 1 in Eastern Palace, but there is some element of luck with this fight, uh, because what he can do is that when he merges into the wall with the other two fake Yugas that he has, what he can end up doing is going all the way around the room in a full lap, and there's nothing I can do about that. And if I know which one the real Yuga is after he appears for the first time, but then for the second time he merges back into the wall, and if he crosses up with another fake Yuga, which he didn't do here, luckily, but if he crosses up with another fake Yuga, it's impossible to tell which one's the real one after that because he could choose to continue his same route or turn around completely. Like, they crossed up there. So the only way I was going to find out is after he came out like that. But he actually stayed his route and then ended up in the bottom middle part of the room. But he could have easily gone to where the other fake went. All right, and yeah, now would be a good time for some donations. And also, uh, maybe an update on that. Uh, the certain blindfold. I'm really wanting to see that. I know. <laughs> I don't I'm trying to find a reason to say the word quick equip. I kind of like that now. <laughs> We've got uh, f uh, $10 from Kotu says, Hello, Zah here. I wish you the best of luck in this run, but the question is, did I miss the chess game? <laughs> Hope I'm not too late. And, of course, we have, yo, super excited to see a link between worlds at GDQX from... Uh, Donut Ninja for five dollars says the Zelda games are some of my favorite, and playing them for charity is even better. Also, hi MC, hope you're having a good time at TwitchCon so far. And of course, speaking of that blindfold and center, we are one thousand four hundred. Let's see, six carry the one dot the cube. <laughs> one thousand four hundred sixty-seven dollars and forty-one cents away. That is how far we have to make that blindfolded run happen. And that has to be done by the end of Zahir's run. And he's going fast. He's waking up on a second table, and so he's already going real fast. And you, know, you see how fast his fingers move on that button over there now. Come on now. <laughs> Fastest master in the West. Actually, Jim, you're pretty fast. Dude. <laughs> so we are now in low roll and this is what the developers had intended for this game is that you can choose any dungeon in any order you like but we have a specific set route to do what's faster and it might seem like thieves hideout would be the first one to go because it's right next to where we are right now but we're actually going to be saving that for last and i'll get to more on why that is later on when we get to these hideout but the first dungeon we're going to end up doing is swamp palace instead you've been playing for a while maybe you should take a break you know that is a good suggestion i think for all of us from time <laughs> <laughs> so i did save it there because there is a soft lock that can possibly happen in swamp palace and this is the final weather vein I'm going to activate. We only need to activate two in low roll. And the reason why we get that one is because it's super close to a portal. So we can have really quick access to high roll when we need it. And what I'm going to do very soon is do a bomb flower skip using the ice rod clipping. And this is where things get really precise and fun. 
for whatever reason, that ice cube that it makes when it goes in the water has collision. It can use it to force yourself down. And this eliminates any need for any more rupees through, uh, for the rest of the run. We don't need any more rupees left. We don't even need to rent the last two items, the, uh, the sand rod or even the boomerang. The, the, uh, that uh, ice rod clip, that first one, uh, let us enter uh, the dungeon without going to get the big bomb, which is a, it's a whole two, two three minute ordeal. And it requires rupees. In theory. <laughs> There we go. But the precision doesn't stop there. Nope, it gets <laughs> worse. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was medium difficulty. High difficulty coming up soon. So the soft lock I mentioned, it can happen when I attempt to do the boss skip of this place. If I go up the stairs in a certain way, it could cause Link to infinitely go on the stairs, up the stairs forever. Ah, this is the 70 star door for, for Koopa. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead, since I'm out of bounds, I'm going to slowly fall into the water, and then I'm going to position myself right here. And be careful. There we go. Nice. And there we go. We're good. And that's Swamp Palace. Swamp Palace done. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> How many keys did you pick up in that dungeon? <laughs> How many enemies did you be in that dungeon? Grand total of nothing. <laughs> Big fat goose egg. <laughs> so it's good that that went pretty well. Aside from the soft lock, what else could have went wrong with that is that if I wasn't close enough to clipping into that room and staying in the wall, I could avoid out and had to do that either ice rod clip again. But if I clipped in bounds, I would have to fight Argus, and that's about a minute down the drain. But now, very conveniently for us, we got Desert Palace next. But we don't have the Sand Rod. Now, I'm going to show you all how to complete Desert Palace without even setting foot into the desert itself. We're gonna be in the misery mire the entire time. We're gonna skip everything. The desert palace, desert boss, and just the desert in general. Yeah, we really don't need sand rod, but we do utilize every other rod that we do get. The ice rod, the fire rod, and the tornado rod all have a role to play here. I'll just line myself up here. There we go. Wow. Nice. That was really well done. <laughs> it, it may have looked easy, but that was all very, very precise. There's still the uh, the boss skip here. This one. All right, there we go. Boom. There's Desert Palace. You thought Swamp Palace was easy. Well, that was actually much harder, but. <laughs> you thought, you thought, yeah, you thought Swamp Palace was short. Well. <laughs> I do want to give a huge, huge shout out to Xander Goth, who uh, ran this at SGDQ 2014, four years ago. He found the Desert Palace boss skip, like, I think it was right before his run. Yeah, like an hour before his run. And it really changed up everything about how, where this run is now. So if, we, if I can get a round of applause for Xander Goth, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make my way to Kakariko Village. We're heading to Skullwoods right now. This is actually where you can kind of play around with the route. You don't necessarily have to do Skullwoods right now. You can actually do Ice Ruins uh, right now and then do Skullwoods afterwards. Or you can also do, uh, you can do, you can do either one of them first. And then before doing the other, you can then go to Dark Palace and do that instead. But if you're going to do Dark Palace, you want to do Turtle Rock right away but some little flexibility you can have with the route. It's pretty, it's pretty kind of nice. But it really comes down to personal preference, mostly. And we're going to Skull Woods first. Yeah. Where th this dungeon's not nearly as broken as <laughs> Desert and Swamp, but we still have some fun stuff in here. 
like darkness <laughs> and not being able to see the video game. <laughs> so a lot of rooms in this place really rely on enemy movement. Unfortunately, that gave the move to the right, so I had to wait for one of the cycles on the other, the little fire sword rope thing. And, but there is gonna be one room where luck really matters and I would really like to have good enemy movements. So I could really hope for the best. And we'll get to that room soon enough. But for now, there is some enemy movement we do have to deal with in this upcoming room, but it might not be too bad. All right, well, he was dead in the middle, so I had to use, I had to take the time to use the lamp. It's not, it's not that bad, but you know. Now, for the longest time, We've been trying to find a way to skip all of Skullwoods because the Sarah's portrait is just sitting on the outside laughing at us. But unfortunately, it's been found recently that there's actually an invisible wall surrounding the portrait specifically. So there's no way for Link to actually get through, even if there were a possible, a possible way to get out of bounds to get to it. So pretty unfortunate, but. Uh, another barrier we have to figure out how to skip. <laughs> We've tried a lot, and we just haven't been able yeah. to yet. <laughs> Maybe someday. So the upcoming room I have right now, this is where monster movement really matters. I want to try to get one of the statues on a switch and then get out of bounds as quickly as possible before the wall master gets in. And these, they were perfect. They were perfect movement. So I was able to get up here because... If they were too much in a way and they and I take hits from them, too many hits, and if I would attempt to tornado rod up there, I could potentially tornado rod right into the wall master, but thankfully that didn't happen. Oof. And we got this little mini boss fight here. It blew my mind. Watch, I was I was watching speedruns of this game when I first saw that you can use bombs to destroy Gibdo. <laughs> yeah, and so you might have seen Zaheer uh, merge into the wall on the uh, upper left corner of the room there. The reason he did that is because when he merges in and then comes right back out, the hand will instantly uh, try to uh, flatten Link onto the ground instead of waiting. Unsuccessfully. That was a quick dash cancel just to get the ski without and wait for those extremely slow moving platforms. When you void out, it returns you to the last safe place that you were standing. And so he stepped onto that platform before he did that. So I'm gonna just burn these Gibdos up real quick and open this door. We got a pretty big glitch coming up for this dungeon. It's called the eyeball duplication glitch. And it's a good one. Now, what I'm gonna do, well, I'm gonna, I have to kill that enemy. He cannot be in the way for this. So I throw this at the pedestal like that. So I'm able to re-grab it out of that. And now that the eyeball is set to inside a pedestal, I cannot drop it again, which is why I had to kill that eyeball bat or eyesore. Because if he dropped it right after the, in, at any point after the duplication, he cannot pick it back up. So. That's why I had to slowly walk over to the other pedestal and throw it in there. And but so that allows you to do have two two eyeballs essentially for the price one there. So yeah. here we have a boss fight, uh, Knuckle Master. This is a tough boss fight too, mm -hmm. man. Here, can you explain how you do this boss fight? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I go towards the top right here, and then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that skip right there was uh, that was found like instantly when the game came out. Day one. The, the one. boss wants you to skip him. He allows <laughs> you to. <laughs> That's why I don't know how to fight him because I just used that in my first place. I throw. don't know how to fight him either. <laughs> it's one of those things like I think I should know how to do that, but I just don't. <laughs> so it might seem like I'm actually going into that portal a little earlier than usual. If you just do a grab animation by just pressing A. You can just gain control of Link immediately and just go into the portals just slightly earlier. So 
So now we're gonna make our way to Ice Rooms. That's our next dungeon. And you might have noticed the pattern here. We skipped three bosses already in, uh, here in Low Rule. And that trend is still going. We're gonna skip the upcoming boss as well, but this will actually be the final boss that we get to skip throughout the run. Every boss afterwards, we do have to fight. Oh, oops. See this trick again, same thing that was used to get on the wall for Desert Palace. Yep. Here he's gonna walk along the edge in order to avoid a cutscene trigger that's just annoying. Where, where Hilda talks to us for a bit? Yeah. Who's Hilda? We, do we know her? <laughs> <laughs> so now would be a great time for donations. This cave is pretty slow. Yeah, it's basically an auto scroller. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, before we read those, we have update $532 away. So let's are get you, it. Are you sure about that? Or there was a big donation. This came Look, through. I have a degree in math here. I better learn how to read <laughs> and face the numbers here. So uh, we have, speaking of numbers, we have a $100 donation from Zaz. Um, Zaz says, hi from the off-camera side of the room. What side is that? Glad I'm here for this Zelda because everyone should play it. We've got $25 from Sunky Kong. Says, hey, Zaz here. Super hyped to see you destroying this run. I want to thank you personally for inspiring me and many others to speedrun this great speed game. You can on hype. I'm sorry. Hype. <laughs> hype. Right. My hype. bad. Sorry. <laughs> and Fitted Awesome Pasha says, Hey Z, I'm so happy you got to run this game for such an awesome cause. I'm looking forward to you breaking this game to pieces one more time. Good luck. Thank you, Sunky and Patch. So, just a little bit of some backstory. I started, this is my first speed game that I've learned. And I learned this back in uh, 2014, March of 2014, and I've been running this game ever since. Uh, this game has yet to... It's always fun to run. And, and you recently got the world record. You, 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 you reclaimed it. <laughs> or was it a reclaim or was it a claim? I think it was a reclaim. Reclaim. Yeah. <laughs> Zahir, what was that thing called? Quick Equip? Quick equip, yeah. Quick equip. Well, I'm going to quickly equip my chat to make sure you all start clapping because we just met the Simply of the Night Blonde Folded Incentive. Good job, everybody. You walked out the wall. What? How'd you do that? Expl explain that. Magic. We were too busy clapping. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's Ice Ruins. Hope you <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Boss is dead. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to give some context on that that that, that, that clip? Because it's a it's a weird one. So you got the elevators moving up and down, and I stand on the one moving up, and then I wait till the wall pushes me out. But I try to go right back into positioning right before it transitions to the next floor, and then I end up just clipping into that wall and then I do a Pexas dash to get out of bounds mm -hmm. and then I make my way to a certain spot fall a few times and end up in a boss room but I have to be pretty careful with that because if I'm if I was further south I could I could have spawned the boss and dark stairs one of the uh, slowest bosses in the game it would have cost me three minutes if I spawned it and the entire spawn zone is the very bottom half of the arena but thankfully, that didn't happen. I just threw two four, fire rods in the middle, melted his invisible ice, and he was done. Yeah, thankfully, uh, in addition to the skip that he just did in the ice ruins, it's very convenient that you can see Link's shadow when he's out of bounds. If you couldn't do that, like that trick would be like exponentially harder than what it already is. So I'm going to make a safe, another safety save right now because something can happen attempting dark may skip where if I... When I go out of bounds, and if I fall into the water, I would have no choice but to just continuously void out until Link dies. So, just gonna have that just in case. Yeah, you mentioned Dark Maze Skip because there's in, in this game there is a area right before Dark Palace. It's a, it's a big old scary maze that's actually not that difficult casually, but it is long, and so we have a, a clever little skip to get around it. 
So I'm just going to get through just a few more cutscenes. And then I'm going to make my way to where a Snapdragon is. Which is one of those chomper enemies. But And it's a good thing that I have full health right now. Sword Beams will help me perform this. Okay, so... Not a big deal. Oof. Ooh. <laughs> that would have ended it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our friend the Chomper, we were able to kind of move Link's geometry and get right on top of that little legend. Yeah, I'm not, not even doing it. <laughs> that was a technical explanation, by the way. So I guess I'm just going to have to go through Dark Palace with one heart. Uh, at least the beeping is not con uh, just super constant like it is in older Zelda titles. But hopefully I don't die. Now this dungeon is great for all you viewers at home. Uh, it's very difficult to see in some later rooms, but tr trust us, Zaheer knows where he's going. So there's an enemy in here in the dark. All right, so he didn't get pushed off and void out. He's still there, but it did push him a while, a good ways away. So he shouldn't be able to hit me. All right, I should be I should be safe in this room. So a lot of this dungeon I just go through in the dark. There will be certain rooms where it's better to keep dark, so you can see lines like that. It's that way for a certain room with the ground itself you'll see what i mean in a moment but there's very few times where i actually have to rely on the lamp in this dungeon until the boss i will need it for the boss something interesting about dark palace is that out of the 12 dungeons in the game this is the only one that does not really have any glitches that you can use to skip parts of it However, it does have a lot of routing tricks that make it a lot faster than it otherwise would be. So now would be a great time for some donations. Oh, that's not cute. <laughs> Zenic has a $300 donation. You know, we need to get a spotlight here because everybody apparently donating is sitting in the audience here. He says, hey, guys, I'm sitting here in the second row. Where you at? See, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> says, here's a small donation from the 100 Pals Achievement Hunter community. Us hardcore gamer initiatives got to stick together. Much love to speedrunning and the GDQs. And, of course, don't forget, we did unlock that blindfold incentive, and so that's going to be some good stuff coming up because I hear his run. And of course, $100 went towards that because Rum, Rum Scotch needs to do a Symphony of the Night. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and uh, we got $100 from Zallard1. From oh, Zallard? Of course, he's got to support all these incredible charities. Definitely need to also do my part and chip on that blindfolded Symphony of the Night. Y'all know I'm an advocate of that blindfolded GDQX action. I had the pleasure of watching Ram Scout practice that in his house the other, other uh, day. And it, it's very strange watching a man play a video game with no TV on, just sitting there with headphones. So you're, gonna, you're all going to enjoy it because you'll get to see the game. I didn't get to see the game. I just trust he was doing it right. <laughs> so for this boss here, I had to very carefully time each of those bomb drops because if one bomb was dropped too close to another one, it would still show him getting hit like that, but it wouldn't actually do any damage. So I messed up one of the timings on one of the bombs, so I had to throw two bombs instead of just one. But ideally, one bomb afterwards would have been what I wanted. But now we get to the second phase of the fight. And I just have to light these torches again. Excuse me, Jimmy Sword, please. All right. So this is a good spot for him. There we go. So I got pretty lucky with that fight because what he could have opted to do is he doesn't always flinch like that in an attack right away when you hit him. 
he can choose to just not care and then just run around the room and then do a big war roar to make all the fires disappear and i'd have to take the time to do that again but thankfully that's that wasn't the case and i will be getting a heart container right here because i only had two hearts remaining and i'm gonna do a pretty big skip soon enough that takes that requires me to take a hit that does two hearts worth of damage so i do really need that health right now so as i mentioned earlier if whenever you do dark palace you want to always want to do turtle rock right afterwards so i'm gonna go ahead and equip my fire rod this is one of the few moments where right after a dungeon i don't immediately just fast travel out of here because turtle rock is just directly south of where we are right now but instead of going to the vacant house and going to the portal and then taking the time to go through another portal to get to where turtle rock is i'm just gonna do this fire rod boost or not <laughs> <laughs> i had a kind of rush it there because the hinox was throwing bombs and i don't want to deal with him right now so just i just stay in the little out of bounds part there and just make my way through to the rock here all right now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this glitch uh a storage glitch i'm gonna swim to this dock right here but now I'm not going to press A, B, and not take any damage so that whatever wall I touch, he could jump right out of. Like it's a dock. Uh, yeah. And then I can get the turtle rock on, uh, really early and skip saving the turtles because, folks, this is a speed run. We're here to <laughs> save the frames, not the animals. <laughs> <laughs> So you won't see me quick equip between attacking those razor ropes there because it's kind of the same idea as that one soldier in Hyrule Castle earlier where if I try to do it too quickly and then use the second one, it won't hit, which really matters for that fight because they can warp and it takes a while. So, But here, we're going to do Turtle Rock Big Key Skip. So I use that Fire Rod to have them have the razor rope spawn here, shoot that and then Tornado Rod right into that. And that's a trick that's gone through a lot of renovation to become as nice and slick as it is now. <laughs> a huge, huge shout out to Bunny Buy. Bunny Buy not only discovered the Ice Rod clip, but found this newer method for that big key skip because the previous method of skipping that big key was just Awful. Completely awful. <laughs> so thank you, Bunny Bye. So the first phase of the Grinex fight, I do two tornado rods each time. It might look like I could go ahead and sneak in a third one, but if he's about to do that attack, you can't actually hit him. So I just do two at a time. But you only need to hit him five times with that before the next phase starts. And I positioned myself and shot an arrow so that the arrow could possibly just hit him square in the head right here. <laughs> got, him, got him. Unfortunately, he gave me the worst attack that he could do is a spin. The best thing he could do is jump back like that and just attack so I can just get a bunch of hits in. And that attack is okay. It gives me some time to heal if I need to. But anything that's better than a spin like that, unfortunately. That spin attack, he'll come, like, charge after you, but if you hit him, it just aborts the attack. But that's it for Turtle Rock. And if my math is right, that means there's only one dungeon left. That's right. Uh, Thief's Hideout is just left. As I mentioned earlier, we save Thief's Hideout for last instead of doing it right away, even though it's the closest dungeon to us when we first come in the low roll. The reason for that is the developers n never intended for you to beat Desert Palace before Thief's Hideout because to, in order to unlock the Sand Rod, you have to beat Thief's Hideout first. And now if you beat every other dungeon last aside from Thief's Hideout, it plays this cutscene where it shows Link getting the Triforce of Courage 
But when I beat these hideout, that cutscene automatically gets skipped. It just plays the normal one where he allows you to be able to rent the sand rod pretty much, which is in the easiest two minute save we could have in this in this game. So that's really nice. It's cool because there's a there's basically two cutscenes you get after a dungeon. Uh, either you know get the Triforce of Courage after a final dungeon, or in this case, you can get the sand rod, which is way shorter, way shorter of a cutscene. And it's, it's sad you don't get the, the, the lore, but this is a speedrun. Lore is not important at the exact moment in time. You can practically make new lore with, you know, with how the route goes. Yeah, Link doesn't even need the Triforce of Courage. He's just going to walk up and get Yuga. Did you know the, the answers go 2, 3, 1 right there? Little, little clever, <laughs> little nod. It's a, it's the best way to remember that those uh, round of answers. Twenty three is number one from, you know, Ocarina of Time. It's it's a good pattern, very recognizable. So this is Steve's hideout, and this room, this room right here, this is my favorite room in the dungeon because it's the only fun one. Because <laughs> what I have to do here, I can easily just clip beneath this room using the statues, but I actually have to take the time to press all three of the switches to unlock the door. Because even though Link can enter this room from the other side of that locked door, a uh, thief girl cannot. So I have to unlock these doors just for her. We'll, we'll be meeting her in just a moment. And we'll be escorting her to the boss room. Try as we might, we still have not found a way to skip Thief Girl. <laughs> it's okay. We need some company. It's been a long adventure. <laughs> a solid hour is what it's been. <laughs> yeah, I believe there's even ways where you can get out of bounds uh, into the boss room, but because you don't have Thief Girl, uh, the boss fight doesn't activate. Nintendo was clever with this one. For once in this game. Yeah, for once. <laughs> <laughs> the cabin on the outside that has the... Uh, the Osfala painting, as, as far as I remember, doesn't actually have a loading zone unless Thief Girl opens the door for you. So <laughs> she kind of locks a lot of this dungeon out, unfortunately. But that's <laughs> the ground clip I was talking about. I had to specifically grab the top half of the statue from the right side. If I grabbed from the bottom half, I would have actually landed straight on the ground in bounds. But I really did not want that to happen because I had to activate that other switch to unlock the other door in that room so that Thief Girl can get in from the other side. And a quick dash, and we're at the, the mini boss room. And these guys can do some big damage if you let them. But we won't let them. So there's actually a way to skip this uh, boss fight, but. It's not faster. It's actually not faster to do. It takes a lot of time to set up for it. Like so much time that it's just, you're better off just doing that fight. So this is Thief Girl right here. This is a thief who got captured and thrown in prison. And if she's caught by any of the blue Zazak enemies, she gets thrown right back into prison. But unfortunately, there's more to that. Any other normal enemy that comes in contact with Thief Girl, she will stop in place, and you have to come back and let her know everything's gonna be all right. It's kind of unfortunate. You would think for a thief, should be good at you know running away from things instead of you know standing still upon contact. So <laughs> she's not maybe not the best Thief Girl. She's well, she got captured after all. <laughs> She's not good for anything. <laughs> she is useful for getting us to the boss. <laughs> Even though we could get there ourselves. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> whoa, wait, 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 wait. I'll take it back. There is one thing she is good at. Uh, she's very good at uh, stealing the fun out of this dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout outs to Fezaheim. I took that joke uh, from her. I know she should be happy. And she can't swim either. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, neither could Link with until the flippers. So. 
Should I got an extra pair? Give him each one flipper. Then <laughs> you can only half swim. I think that's still drowning, gymnast. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to make my way here, but I'm going to try to move a little carefully so not only does she not fall, but I didn't spawn a group of blue Zazax either, so that worked out pretty well. And let's see if I get the frame perfect drop down. It saves a, about a half a second, but I got it. Hey. Hey. <laughs> 30 frames. <laughs> So I'm going to equip the bow right now, and I'm going to time a shot like that so he's not, he's get, he gets pushed out of the way because you, you really don't want them to capture her at this point. That's a spooky moment no matter what. I think I shot that too late. Yeah, I shot that too late. That's all right. So you do want to kind of be careful with this room. You don't want like any of the rats to push you off. If you get pushed off and you fall, I had no choice. <laughs> that monster <laughs> tail was just there. Two out of three. We're almost there. It's probably going to happen in the chain and ballroom in low roll yeah. castle. Oh, but as to more as to why this room is my, uh, my favorite room in the dungeon, I get to carefully place bombs like that in half thief girl in a very specific spot. Well, it wasn't perfect. Because the ideal would have been for uh, the blue Zazak to be boosted right to where Thief Girl is, and then I can just finish him off, but it was close enough. Just. So she's going to stand right there, and I'm going to turn it around onto the back of this thing, so I can just merge in right away and go straight to the boss key. Hey. And then... We got Stalblind coming up. I'm gonna grab these hearts because he does have some factor of luck on his movements and the type of attack he does in a certain part of the fight. But I'm gonna be using Hammer. Hammer is a very good item against Stalblind for some reason. For one Hammer Swing, it's possible for me to get a phantom hit for each hammer swing on the very last phase. Okay, he gave me the best attack, so that's nice. Like, right there, there's... I was doing two hits with one hammer swing, and that does a lot of damage, so... Oops. Okay, that would have finished him, but the head hit me out of the way, so... So that's why that's also why I don't bother to quick equip cancel the hammer there, even though it's really laggy, but if I do quick equip, the phantom hit won't happen, so had to I just had to let the hammer go. It's full course. Uh now would be a good time for donations. Alrighty then. We have a $25 donation from the Wayfaring Fox 59 It says, Hey, Za here. Wishing you the best closing out this run. I'm really digging the hug train, and I would like to keep that going. So if both couches can hug it out, I'll donate an extra $10. Is this $10? <laughs> Y'all in the crowd better hug, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got a $100 or some euro. Euro says $5, five dollar train Psh, Whatever All aboard the hundred dollar train Oh boy And of course we got uh, Fifteen dollars from Varen Says cheers And we've got Twenty five dollars from Missions That says good money For a good cause Also let's make sure All of our runners Are blindfolded <laughs> All of them It's Blind okay Game's done quick It's okay Low rule cast is not that difficult I'm sure that here can take care of it no problem yeah i'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm joking on this one please don't <laughs> frame perfect trick no problem 60 <laughs> frames per second easy peasy oh oops that's all right yeah i'm gonna do this right here because the final boss is very very dangerous and in any percent speed run because i don't have a shield which means i can't block any of his attacks uh, i'm not getting any mail upgrade because they're too far out of the way and I only have the Master Sword. I, only, I can only do so much damage. 
this entire uh, like final dungeon area is it's really fun. It's really cool, and uh, we're gonna experience a solid eighth of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna fight this fiery chain and ball guy. He's got more health than the chain and ball guy back at Hyrule, but the how I do the fight is the same exact idea: three sword hits and then a bow to cancel that out until he dies. Surprisingly, I didn't run into the final monster item, the monster horn. That room is usually the place where you'd get a bunch of monster stuff. So, no, three for three, I guess. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> got, got a mi minor, uh, I'd say a minor trick coming up, maybe major. Yeah, let's go with major. I think it's a major <laughs> trick. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> we got trial skip coming up. And it is a frame perfect trick. You're supposed to have to do four different trials that test your abilities to use certain items, but we, we just skip it. This one is frame perfect. Second try is good. As we head to uh, uh, Yuga Ganon, would you like to give a quick explanation of what that was? Uh, that was trial skip. So I did a spin attack to recoil off of the uh, cracked little rock right above where the uh, bomb flower was. And I timed letting go of the B button as soon as I saw the fourth red bomb flash so that when he gets boosted in, into the air, the explosion would push him back. So this is Yugan, and he's the hardest fight in the run because... He does a lot of damage. That attack right there, five hearts. Five hearts, so he does pretty big damage. And there's something really important to know with this fight. When he disappears, you can kind of see some particles floating in a certain direction. Oh, okay. That's all right. But, uh, so you can get an idea of where he's gonna teleport to, which is very important to know, because he can reappear having a ready attack just to go and get you and a normal his quickest attack does three hearts so here you actually just taught me something and, and i feel really dumb is it, <laughs> that would have helped with some runs i think along the way <laughs> is it the particle thing yeah just the particle <laughs> thing no idea it really helps for this part too so he yeah. goes down so i know i have an idea of where the trident is going to go to i always thought you said a really a good third sense with for that <laughs> So I'm also using the bow. The bow helps to just get hits in while I'm far away because most of the time I don't want to be too close to him. So I got plenty of health, so I'm going to go for Crazy Tennis. Can't have a Zelda game that doesn't end with a battle of tennis. Oh, oh, all right, that's okay. That's all right. All right, that's okay. So to deal with the tennis in this game, most other Zelda games, to the best of my knowledge, you can just spam the sword and he'll hit it every time. You can't really do that with the tennis in this game. Your sword hits have to be timed because if you just mash the sword and the ball, he hits the ball, it's just gonna bounce a little bit away and then go right back at Link. So, and it does three hearts of damage, so. Not something I can uh, do for the rest of the fight, but towards the end of the fight, when he starts throwing two balls, that's when I could mash, so. And the fire bats in this fight, I think they do two hearts, so definitely don't want to get hit by those either, so. Yeah, thankfully there's sort of a semi-circular pattern that you can run around in to avoid those. All right. So same deal with this part. Avoid fire bats. The 
But the fire bats, they move in this time is a little different here. They kind of altered uh, their own clockwise rotation. If that's the right way to put it, but... So here I could just match, and the fight's pretty much done. Oh, uh, a heads up. Timing does not stop when I kill you, Ganon. Timing ends the moment I touch the Triforce. So it's like a good minute after the final blow to Ganon. That, that's a good Ganon. I didn't die, so that's great. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the thing. That deserves a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of just have to let Zelda talk for a bit. So uh, overall, do you, do you think more people should get into this game? you think the that your world record should be contested, or what, what, what do you think? Absolutely. 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 They are given all the fantastic changes, especially found by Bunny Bai as of late with all the ice rod clipping. Uh, this is actually the easiest this run has ever been to run. So it's very beginner friendly. I highly recommend it to anybody. It's very, it's really fun. It's not a lot of cooldown time at all either. Uh, we're coming up on time. Time. <laughs> Hold on. Do you have any closing thoughts to hear? Um, there's a glitch in the credits. I want to show that off. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that run overall? Um, you got all the major one, stuff. So yeah, one, one twenty-five, twenty-three. Um, it's fine. It's <laughs> it's fine. I'll take it. I'll take that time. It's uh, it beats the estimate. So. <laughs> That's the important thing at GDQ, yeah. Uh, my current PB is uh, one twenty-one oh one. So I did lose quite a bit of time, but. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with how most things went. But um, I'll I'll let you know when we get closer to the glitch in the credits, because it's it's somewhere towards the middle or towards the end of it. But basically, I would have to mash B the whole time, or well, not the whole time, but by the time it happens, I would have to be mashing B. But I'll come up soon enough. But, um, so the deal with this glitch in the credits is that Link is loaded somewhere. Link is still loaded in the game. You can't see him, but he's loaded somewhere. And you can actually move around and use your sword and all that stuff. Who's the guy in this painting? I don't know. R I Russo? <laughs> don't know. I've, I've never seen that guy before. I think he has the power gloves. What are those? I don't know. All right, so it should be coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I think this should be it. Okay, no, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Got all excited. Should be after this. Should be after this. Yeah, it should be here. So keep an eye on the dirt road. And there he is, there's Link. <laughs> <laughs> so the credits is coming to a close, and I want to uh, 
huge shout out to the entire A Link Between Worlds community, uh, especially Romulos. He has really helped me out a bunch with uh, try to clean up on certain strats and movement and all that stuff. And he has a full tutorial that's up to date with this game. So if you want to check that out, give uh, Romulos X a look and a follow or subscribe as well. And uh, everyone else from the Olympic Two Worlds community as well. Huge shout out to Oicho. Uh, big, big supporter. One of the runners as well. Bunny by again. Xandergoth. And uh, everyone else from the Olympic Two Worlds community as well. And, uh, and also a huge, huge thank you to the GDQ staff. I, I am very grateful to have run this game at a marathon. So... Uh, huge applause to the GDQ staff. All right. Again, a fantastic run from the Legend of Zaheer in between worlds for the 3DS. And of course, coming up next, if you all are following along your schedules, you'll see set up block one. But of course, during that run, we did have the Symphony of the Night blindfolded run coming up by the one and only ROM Scout. Um, we do have a little uh, prize show off here coming up in just a little bit. So we have a lot of donations, obviously, especially towards that incentive. So this is definitely not the time to go anywhere. But before we get to that, let's go catch up on these numerous donations here. Remember, all your donations are going to 10 different charities. In fact, in case you don't know, those 10 charities, we've got Able Gamers, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, the Call of Duty, Direct Relief, Doctors Without Borders, Extra Life, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Save the Children, St. Jude's Hospital, and To Write Love on Our Arms. So remember, every one of those donations goes to those 10 charities. All right, you all. So let's read some more of these donations, shall we? We have uh, $5 from Miss Moonshine. says, hey, me, Big John, you're doing a great job as an announcer. Thank you. I can't afford a lot, but put this towards the one of my favorite games, Symphony of the Night. We've got $25 from Kenan, who says, yo, I got to see this Castlevania Symphony of the Night blindfolded. Put my money towards this. You're going to hear a lot of these Symphony of the Nights. A lot of you all... A very, very generous putting it towards that $15,000 incentive. We have uh, $50 from Mere Knight. Says, looking forward to that blindfold run. Good luck. $25 from Lenny, who says, one ticket for the Symphony of the Night blindfold to run. Donation train, please. We've got 20 bucks from Shadow Dart. Let's make that Symphony of the Night run happen. Also, good luck to all the runners. Greetings from Earth. Oh, there's a new place. We have $15 from Adam the Fever, which says, goodness gracious, another GDQ. Well, time to watch some amazing speedrunners do what they do best while I do what I do best. Donate. Here's to the Symphony of the Night blindfolded run. We have $100 anonymously donated that says, put this towards the blindfolded Symphony of the Night run. Been watching GDQ for years and love every event. Keep it up. $25 from Kiefer, he says, a hug for Rom Scout. Let's see you and Pusheen crush Symphony of the Night. $25 from Camwin says, must see my favorite Metroidvania game, Symphony of the Night done blindfolded. And never mind, Pants. I think I need a Symphony of the Night counter right now. $100. 
anonymously donated. Says shout outs to all the runners. You guys are awesome. Also puts $25 in that donation pool. Says, hey, y'all, I'm so glad that what was originally supposed to be a one-off marathon has now become an annual tradition. Shout out to everyone who made this happen, as well as the runners and my fellow mods. Love y'all. Love. Since Big John is my bud, let him pick where it goes. I'll get to that. $10 from Alby. Thank you for what you are doing. Ackleran with $25 has got to get in for that blindfolded Symphony of the Night run. In case you haven't read between the contest clues, I wonder what run is coming up next. Yes, it's that blindfolded Symphony of the Night run coming up with Rom Scout. You know, who needs, a, who needs a blindfold? I can just stand in front of him. It's the same difference, right? $5 anonymously donated says thanks to everyone who makes this event possible. Um... We'll be back for more Castlevania, please. Yes. Jen Carr with $10 says, get your hype on, everyone. Thank you, Pokemon Lover, for your $15 donation as well. Another anonymous $25 that says, guys, if everyone watching right now can spare $1, we can easily fund. Well, apparently we did. And of course, that $25 is here for a few people who couldn't do it. Mad Scientist Mike with $25 as well says, thanks to everyone working the event. They are always a great watch. <laughs> so remember, you all, if you want to know what's being played, you remember this event is going through tomorrow, you know, so go to gamesonquick.com. Check out the schedule. We've got some more things that we need to make happen. I might be a little biased here, but, you know, there is a Mario Brothers 3 co-op coming up tomorrow. And uh, we need to make that happen. That is a Mario Brothers 3 co-op run. $20,000 is the amount required. That is a co-op run between my buddies, the legless Wonder Grand Pooh Bear, and the Canadian ham himself, Mitch Flower Power. So if you want to see those two tackle it co-op style right after a certain person's lost levels run, hint, hint, you all need to make that happen. That's tomorrow, Okay. And, of course, there's uh, Cheese's Mario 64 run turned into a 120 star. Got to make these Mario things. I'm a little biased, but we got to get them in. We have a $5 donation from Silver Knight 210. It says, here's an extra $5 to charity because Big John is awesome. Oh. Freelancer. Where is Freelancer at? Freelancer standing back there with $100, chat. Uh, hello. Thank you. Says hello from the back of the room. Also, save the frames. The frames are real, the animals are not. Wow. They're frauds. We have uh, $10 that was anonymously donated. Says my budget is tight, but not as tight as seeing Blindfolded Symphony of the Night. We got a five dollar anonymous donation that simply says heart. Oh. Twenty five dollars anonymously donated that says praise the sun. We got a twenty five dollar donation from uh Shiru Fori. That was said, I really enjoyed um, the Mega Man X Center. It said, having fun watching all the runs. Can't wait to see maybe runs of Mega Man 11 next GDQ and eventually Mega Man X9. I don't have to call the Capcom about that one. We'll see about that. But thank you so much for that $25. Fallen One has donated $100 as well. Woo! And uh, Fallen One says, hi, it's GDQX, Fallen One here. I'm wearing my Harvey Relief Done Quick shirt, and I got a lot of compliments about it. I made sure everyone knew that this was going on this weekend. Put this towards that Symphony of the Night blind for the run just because it just sounds fun. Thank you. Thank you. Now, also talking about 
upcoming games, the next incentive we have is Dark Souls 3, which is coming up after Romskel's blindfolded run. So if you want to see that Boxing Gale thing happen, we are about uh, just about $2,900 short of the $5,000 goal. So got to get that in during this run, you know. If history repeats itself, maybe we'll have controller issues again. We have $100 from Weird Gaijin. It says, uh, Big John, my wife and I love your commentary. Yeah, especially when I'm not singing about egg rolls. Keep it up, and here's another 100 to make sure to see that Symphony of the Night blindfolded run. We have $50 from Max who says, can't wait for Mr. Llama's D2 normal sorceress run. Let's use this GDQ as an opportunity to prove to Blizzard that there is, in fact, a cow level. 